The following episode of Dad vs. Daughter was made possible by a contribution from Academy Games. 1754 Conquest, the French and Indian War, is a war game from Academy Games. Now, on the surface, this looks a lot like Risk, but growing up, I hated Risk. Uh, but this game does a lot of things that actually corrects those things that I didn't like about Risk and uh, makes this a very enjoyable experience. So one of the things we're gonna be able to do, we're gonna have certain factions that we're gonna represent, either the British regulars, the British colonials, the French uh, regulars, or the French Canadians. Uh, we're also gonna have Native Americans that are going to help both sides uh, try to achieve victory. So my friend Gunter from Academy Games is gonna give you an overview on how the game is played. And then I'm gonna kinda of go over some of the setup and some of the other overview. And then we're gonna watch dad and his friends play through a round, and then we're gonna come back and tell you what we think. So check it out. Hi guys, my name's Gunta Eiger with Academy Games, and uh, we have a 1754 French and Indian War here, which is our part of our Birth of America series of games. And so this is the third game in the series, and this covers the French and Indian War. Now, what makes this game so exciting and fun is that it is a team game. You're not a 1v1 or one, uh, four people against all each other. You're playing one to two players versus one to two players. One side plays as the French and their colonial allies, and one side plays as the British and their colonial allies. So you get both the competitive feel of a war game and the cooperative feel of a lot of uh, cooperative games. And so it makes it great for people that like the war games and also people that like Euro games that have a lot more about making deals and working together. The game also is a very easy to learn uh, game to play. You. Uh, really simple parts to a turn. You simply place reinforcements where they're pictured on the board. Very pictorial map for easy setup. Then you choose one card from a hand of three cards. Do you mind if I borrow one of your cards, sir? And you just see, it's very pictorial. You show the number of armies you can move and how far you can move them. Now, what's interesting is that you don't just move your own troops, you also move your allies' troops. And this is where the teamwork and cooperation comes in. And you're also not making a decision for all of your units. You're deciding what are the few best moves I need to make, and you make those decisions. Keeps turns quick, keeps people engaged, because after you move, you battle. Everybody rolls their own dice in battle. Your troops are engaged with each other. Sometimes your troops will say, I don't want to fight, and they run away. So a great family game, two to four players, plays in about an hour. And uh, it's a, a light complexity rule system with deep strategy that will keep you playing over and over again, exploring the complex ways to win this very simple game. As you can see, we've got a very large map here. And one of the great things about the game is it already has the setup on the board. So if you look closely, you can see it'll have the color and the number of cubes that we need to put in each of the areas. So in this case, it's got one red and one white. So we'll put those there again over here and so forth. We also start with control markers in the neutral areas. Now neutral is the green. That represents the Native American lands. So you'll see that we have uh, basically control points in uh, certain of the sections here. That's represented by these stars. And if it is in the green sections to start, then whoever has their cubes there, we're gonna place that marker. So you can see we've got the British marker here near Fort Necessity. Up here in uh, Fort Machault, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, uh, we've got one of the control markers for the uh, French. Setup uh, in the book will also tell you that there are six forts that you're actually gonna put out. Uh, so you put these little tokens here, so you can see we've got them on Fort Necessity and so forth. So we've got three here, one there, and then two more over there. We also have muster areas, and this is where the uh, Colonials and the French Canadians are gonna come in for their reinforcements. So you can see we're gonna start, we've got a token here that uh, has 
two uh, white cubes on there. On the flip side, it's got three white cubes. And there's gonna be cards that it's gonna allow us to flip that over. But uh, we're gonna start with a muster point there. And then the French Canadians are gonna start with their muster point over there. Now, whenever we have reinforcements, the uh, regulars, the British regulars, are gonna come into any of the ports that they control, and the French regulars are gonna do the same. Now, when we do have reinforcements, we are going to uh, place certain numbers of those out there as well as any of the units that may have fled during the battle. And some of the dice have these little running men uh, icon on them. That is basically for the British Colonials and the French Canadians. And those represent those troops that fled during battle. And then they're gonna come back in during our reinforcement phase. So in addition to the muster points that we already have, uh, we each will have, or each side will have an, an additional muster point, and they're gonna be able to place that in the board where they have control. And then finally, each faction is going to place four more of their cubes on the map um, in any of the sections that they have. So, uh, so like the British will be in the red areas and the French will be in the purple areas. <laughs> So, Starting with the French Canadians and then the French regulars, they're going to place their four cubes a piece out there. And then the British Colonials and the British regulars will then place their four. And then finally, we are going to put the round cubes in this bag. And you'll see I've already got those in there. And these are just blank color cubes, but they represent each of the different factions, including the Native Americans. So we're going to put those in the bag, and then that's how we're going to determine turn order. So when we pull the cubes out of the bag, we don't know what order we're gonna have. So we will start placing those on these, on the turn sequence uh, area here. And you'll notice there are symbols there. And that's gonna come into play whenever we pull the Native American cube, like I have just done here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look and see where that uh, icon is on the map. And then the Native American reinforcements are gonna go there. Each symbol is, uh, put on the map twice. So we're gonna look for this little diamond with a cross in it. And let's see, we've got one up here and we've got one way over there. So after their reinforcements are placed, we're gonna to continue to draw to the bag and each of those factions will be taking their turn in that order. And then here, once the British Colonials have ended their turn, then we would move on and go to the next round. Now, uh, the game cannot end before the end of the third round. And you'll notice the rounds say so one, two, three, all the way up to eight. So once we get to the end of the third round, we're gonna look and see if we have met the uh, end of game conditions, which is going to be based on the truce cards that we have. And we've got a special board that is an add-on that you can get from Academy Games. And whenever you play a truce card, you're gonna place that in your faction spot. So either British regulars, British colonials, French regulars, and French Canadians. And then the way the game is gonna be, the end of the game is gonna be triggered is when one faction has uh, both of their truce cards out or if all four truce cards have been played. The way we're gonna determine the winner is we're gonna look and see who has the most of these control markers on the board? Now, the game can end in a tie if at the end of that round, uh, each faction or each side has the same number of control tokens. I know in his overview, Gunter talked about the uh, moving of troops. So let's show you kind of how a battle situation might unfold. So let's say that I played uh, movement cards that are gonna allow me to move armies. So this would be one army. And as long as I have one of my faction cubes uh, in that army, then I can control it. So let's just say that I was able to move up to here and I was able to move another army up to here. So once I've done all of my movement and played any event cards that I'm going to uh, play, then we will resolve a battle. Uh, so you'll see that I actually have as the, the British we have four of the British Colonials and we have uh, two of the British Regulars. Um, French only have one regular, one French regular, one French Canadian, and because they already controlled the Native Americans, they have one of those. So 
the way the battle unfolds is the defenders actually get to roll first. So you'll look and see how many of the dice that they can roll. So the French side will get one of each, and then they will roll that. And you'll see that they had two hits and a command uh, decision for the Native Americans. So since I am on the losing end of this, I get to choose which of these are gonna take the hits. So let's just say that I have my British Colonials take the hit, and those just go back into the pool. So uh, the French can now decide if they want to basically move this uh, American Native American to either uh, an adjacent spot or leave them in the battle. And we're gonna say they're gonna leave them in the battle. So now we look at the attackers. So the French or the British colonials could roll up to three dice, but because they only have two cubes there, they're gonna roll two. And there are two of the British regulars, which is the max, and so they're gonna roll. And you'll see that one of the uh, British colonials is gonna flee, so he's gonna go over here to that fled unit area. But then they inflicted three hits, so that will wipe them out from that spot. And because this is basically the enemy territory for the British, and you see a control marker there, they are gonna be able to put one of their control tokens on that spot. Now, if for any reason they leave and have no cubes of their color left behind, then that token would then come off the board. Or if the French mount a counterattack and come back over here and kick them out, then this would simply be removed. The French are not gonna put another control token here because it's in their, uh, their own territory and uh, you only put markers in the enemy territory. Here is what the British regular truce card looks like. You can see it says truce there and it has movement. So they're gonna be able to move up to three armies for a total of two spaces each. So uh, once this is played and once the movement is resolved, then this card is then placed on the truce board or the Treaty of Paris board. Um, and that shows that the British have already got half of their truce in. Other cards that we have, we have event cards. Now, if you ever have three event cards in your hand, the rules tell you that you're gonna take those three, you're gonna shuffle them back in your deck and you're gonna draw because you always have to play one movement card at least on a turn. But uh, the events are gonna be special and they're gonna basically tell you what you can do. You can either build another fort somewhere or uh, you might be able to move a muster point or flip the muster point uh, over to the number three side. But you can see there are several events that we have during uh, the course of the game that we can play. And once any card is played, it's out of the game for the rest of the duration. And then you can see we have various other movement cards as well. I think between Gunther's overview and my setup and kind of a uh, little overview, I think you've got a good idea, but I think you'll get a better idea if you can watch a turn being played. So uh, Dad and his buddies recently had a chance to get this to the table, and uh, you've heard me talk about my friend Hefe. Hefe and I were the British regulars and the British colonials against my buddy Chris and James, who were the French regulars and the French Canadians. So uh, let's watch as that game kind of plays out in one of the turns, and then we'll come back and tell you what we think. To set the stage, we have uh, Dad and Hefe as the British regulars. Hefe is British regular. I am the British colonials against James and Chris, who are the French Canadians and the French regulars. Now, we are in round three, as you can see by the round marker there. And for the most part, the British have been getting their butts kicked. So we're hoping to turn that around. So the way we're gonna start off is we are going to draw one of the cubes out of the bag to find out who is going first. And we have green. So the Native Americans, we're gonna look and see what this symbol is. It's the bullseye symbol or the hit symbol. There's two of those on the board. Each one of those areas is going to get three reinforcements. And in the far corner. So here in Shawnee yeah, and up there. All right, so now that we've assigned those, we'll go ahead and pull another cube out to find out which of the players goes next. And that would be me. 
<laughs> so I actually have a bunch of units in the flat area, but what I can do is I can put uh, two in our reinforcement, our muster area, which will be up here wow. Wow. and down here. And then I will take all the rest of these guys. Jeez. That's the beauty of running away from battle, sir. <laughs> they get to magically well, reappear. Yeah. And Cafe, what do you think? I like it. Three there and three here? Yep. Mm. Oh, there's, those two are separate. Yep. <laughs> so these are the cards that I have. Just to kind of show you there. So, not great movement options. I'm thinking. That's a shame. That go into the future and breaks my heart. Look at this. <laughs> I'm thinking this. I like it. I'm liking it a lot. Okay. All right. So we are going to do the movement. I can move four four armies, uh, one space each. We are going to bring the wrath of. Yeah. But we want to cross up, I really up to want. here. <clears throat> I, I think you got so many people there. Um, now, you, you can you move like We're one army once. here? Yeah, but one space. But but can you move m like one here, one here? Can you split these up? But two Those separate armies, armies then, right? I can, but that would be two separate armies. But, but that's you got, fine. You got four. That's fine. All okay, right. So we want to. I'm going to leave you back. We want to move these guys up here. The British are coming. Yep. Yeah, they are. Wow. I say bring those up too and leave I'd it empty. Say, I would say how, how about bring bring a couple there, maybe. Well, no. Just how many? No. I, I, like that? That's what I was thinking. All right. Because we own the spot up up there. Up right? there? Yeah. yeah. Let's take them out. We can move, move some of these guys up? Yep. How many you want to move up? I'd say two. Just two? Yep. Mm. Alright, and we can move mm. one more army, one space. We want to try to take that port? <clears throat> you move let's, let's thin them out. Four. Let's thin them out. Alright, so let's move like that. I like it. That, that gives me... I can throw one die here, and if we take this, I can have that presence again. Alright, our rolling right. up to this point has sucked. The only battle that we won was a battle we didn't actually roll any dice because they fled. So as the defenders, they get to choose which uh, conflict happens first, and they will also roll dice first. Hey, let's move me in here because if okay, we'll maximize our rolls when we fine. do that. Yep, do that. Do you want to leave your guy in there? Yeah, leave, leave, him, leave him in. Leave him in? Okay. Yeah. All right, I think we're done. So it's to you guys as defenders. Yep, we get to choose which battle to go first. Let's let's do small to big, right? All right, sounds good. Right, so, so this one right here. There. All right, so one purple and one yellow die. There's no fort, and I got nothing. Run away! So they could, they could run, run away. Two if they want. <sighs> They're reinforcing. I know. So it looks like we can. Yep. So that actually hurt us. Maybe. No, but... But, uh, but you took the location. So we will get to put one of our control markers there. All right. So that ends that battle. So we go on to the next conflict. So we have uh, three of the French Canadians and three of the French regulars. We're going to lose this one bigger one Native than American. we thought we'd win. So we've got this is, this is three, not good. two. No, because I'm, bunch of Native American I'm prone to run away. Yeah. Uh, there are no forts in this one as well. James, run. Oh, man. Oh, one runs one. But two one, please. Oh, did you throw three hits? Yeah. Oop, I'm sorry. That was not in there. <laughs> All right. All right. Do it, Tim. Get him. Oh, a runaway. Two runaways. Two runaways. Put those over in the flood, would you? That's in the third round, right? Yep. Well, I think... That's actually think probably we'll, good because we're going to kill those guys anyway. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. You two runaways and a hit. Oops, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, maybe me. you can hit one of them, Tim. Jeez. Try to hit one. A parting shot on the way out. Parting shot. Nope, I oh. run away. All right. At least he didn't die. So we held strong there. Yes. All right. Yes. Final one down there is uh, one yellow and four purple. Oh, no purple. native. Three, three hits. I'm not liking Chris's rolling ability. Take uh, take all three white out. You are really hitting well there. 
All right, so we're rolling. Oh, psh. all I do is run away. One hit. So Take one of the white pick. goes to f to the flood units area. And then and we remove purple. one purple piece. Nope. As Wrong a, board. As a, as a, he's deed. Oh. Nope. No, no. That's oh, the flood okay. unit area. Sorry. I, I, I did that too. Two purple? I did that one. too. One. I'll take two. All right. Two more two hits. hits. Take me out to the ball game. Boy, we are just not there, doing nope. well here. Are we? yeah. <laughs> Watch him. Watch we him. Just not doing well. Oh, that hurt. Oh, this this could be bad. All right. One hit. Uh, wait, Purple. Think so? Yep. Are you sure? It keeps the third dying. Okay. All right. Look at you counting. One, and I could be it. Oh, Ooh. sorry. That's all right. Is this battle keeps going back and forth. Come on, Hefe. I can't nope. roll. All right. You get two, uh, Two, and you get one. That's it. Okay. Yeah, we are dead. Done. Not good. Nice. Not good. Two out of three, we'll take those. Yep. All right, so my card gets discarded, and I will draw back up to three cards, and we'll draw another cube out of the bag, find out who goes next. Purple. Yes, oh. purple. Oh, all right. So the French regulars, which is Chris. All right, so I get to bring four in to port locations. Oh, I know which one you're bringing them in. Yep. yep. Not good. We're going to just knock that one right out. Yeah. That, I couldn't have come in there anyway. I mean, that was the bad hmm? bad part of not taking I, that battle. Yeah, I really wish. Um, all right, uh, so movement. You did. Dig deep. Yeah, so we'll do the two two armies, two movements. I think I want to just focus on that do it. and just overkill. Double, right? double, yep, double, double. Well, let's not let's not be too too aggressive there. No, let's we're take gonna, a ball. We're gonna do that. Let's we're gonna do that. that. Chris or Tim, you got these guys. So this is the card that uh, Chris played. All right. Over what overwhelming odds, but I so we moved two. I think uh, you got this. One army and one army, and so it's. It's your role to defend. And watch me run away like a little girl. <laughs> but they always come back. You can retreat. Oh. Well, um, all right. And then. Oh, well, hang on. Oh, yeah. You've got a command decision. Yeah. You know what? Let's, let's do that. Let's come over there. Okay. And then the muster point is no longer effective for you. No, it stays there. It stays oh, there. It stays there. Because okay. you, you can retake it. From there. Unless you guys get this spot. All right. Excellent. Uh. And that's it? Yeah, it seems like kind of a, a lull. All right. Try we'll take it. Try All right, so that's the end of Chris's turn. He'll draw back up to three cards, and we'll I'm draw another cube out just, of the bag. We should have just left that, you know, now you try it. It's so hard to defend that area. And we got oh, the French Canadians, the French eh? Hey. This wow, is James' that. turn. Oh, gosh. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Here's all your fled units, my friend. Wow. Uh, so, okay, so we muster, there are two muster points, which I put two here and two here. Uh, and then all the units that have fled previously come back at the muster points as well. Um, I'm, I'm really, I think I'm more concerned here right now, because that's, the muster point's gone over there. Unless you think I need, because we've got a decent yeah, presence over there. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, good, good, good. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking all here. There. Yeah. Um, so now I have to play a card. Um, this one I'm not going to use for okay. the time being. Uh, so it's one of these two. Part of me wants to go and pick up the rest of these guys and continue down, but I feel like we really need to shore up our front lines a little bit here. So... Yeah, they have the one port that they can... Uh, mass from but they don't have presence in, i guess two ports so i i would agree do i do i could go so here i only like keep those there i can go one two three i could potentially do that you could but i i i don't know there's I don't no know. it feels like we want to take there's yeah, no there's victory, no victory point, point, point there, there but i mean we well, yeah, we could pick up two victory points through that stretch, right? Potentially. Yeah. Potentially, but but we could also weaken ourselves on that corner too. Granted, maybe we weaken him as well, but 
Yeah, I don't like being able to or having to having discussion in the open board like that. I yeah, really want the private screen. Right. Can, yeah. Um, Did the other other one have that little board? Seventeen seventy five. Yeah. So. The alternative is yeah, we move from here and we push back. Correct. Which is basically just taking back these. Because remember, obviously, uh, red's gonna go next. With that army can be yeah, moved. Use it. Now they're coming in from the side, so he's not, yeah. not gonna be bolstering mm -hmm. over here. Yeah. Oh. But well, unless he's got a card. But uh, so ultimately, it's either uh, bring people up mm -hmm. to kind of prepare this front, and I could do that. And, you know, maybe I do that. Maybe I just bring people up here and then bring people up there, and we've got a nice presence here and a nice presence here. Um, I I think let's go ahead and do that. Let's play oh. defensively here because. Uh, even if they put a truce card out in this round, it, it won't. Uh, we're not in a position to end it this this turn. We're going to come back and start an entire another turn over. Right. So it's better to be in position for that. All right. So we're going to play this move a card, uh, which uh, uh, moves uh, two armies one space. We are going to take this uh, army right here with one of my guys right there. Um, and then we're gonna take, oh, I don't know, do we do something like that? I guess I could even bring, because as long as we have a press. Yeah, because it takes them a lot of movement to right, come around. Right, right, I think so. And, alright. Uh, so that's pretty boring turn there. Just took a long time to talk it out. Alright. Alright, so we'll draw the final cube, which we know is red. Huh, go figure. Process of elimination. Fa seems to have liked that uh, turn of events. So that makes me nervous. <laughs> wow, those are my choices. Whoops. Well, I like that one. <laughs> yeah, still. Yeah. That's funny. Because look what I just got to you. There you go. But I mean, so, I would here. like that to be a different word. Let's see that. Oh. <laughs> True. You, okay, so this is the card that Fa you know is going to use. <laughs> He's going to be able to move two armies, two spaces. See, I'm thinking, get these guys up. Mm -hmm. um, actually, before Let's you do any back. of that, let's reinforce. Oh, that's true. <laughs> I don't have a lot to reinforce for that, do I? Yeah, so he's going to put four, and he only has two areas that he can actually put reinforcements in. Uh, because as a British, British regulars, they can only go into the harbors. And we only control two. So I'd say probably this one here. Yeah, I was thinking we have a chance to, to come back in through this way, too. Well, you could, because you could move. It could be all me, though. Move two. Because you're not there. Yeah. So I'm only going to roll two to there, two, you can move. Three. You could move all four in, but they have a fort. Because, they got a fort. Because we lost the fort die. and couldn't burn it. <laughs> Oh no, you roll three die. So you you'd be four die to buy two. Or four plus a four. That, that'd yeah. be, that's murderous. Can't do that. But you could reinforce there. Yeah, because we're gonna could, take that next. Or you could reinforce up here. Oh actually you can't because you're only moving two. Two. Yeah. So you could go yeah. I could reinforce you could go there. That uh you could move these guys <laughs> yeah. up though. I'd actually probably so move these guys up to here to one. reinforce our uh, well. I would probably uh, around. Do you think it'd be beneficial on our muster point. Series? All but one, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Well, like I said, yeah. seventeen seventy-five has it. Okay. Or, 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 or just move them all. Yeah. It's like we're not protecting that either, or well, this. Right. It's yeah. if they get th through those lines that we're in trouble. But however you want to do it, let's just move all these guys up to here then. That's two spots. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. I think nice. I'm well done. I mean, we could could move these guys over here to start moving up that way, but I don't know. It's so late in the game. I'm gonna just put four guys here. All right. All right. So no battles for that round. So or that turn. So that will actually end the round since we've pulled all of the cubes back. So. We're going to go ahead and play the rest of the game, but I think it's a foregone conclusion that the British are probably going to lose on this, but we'll come back and we'll uh, show you who, who actually wins. As predicted, the British got their tails handed to them heartily. Uh, what was the final 
count. We had one, two, three, four, five markers, and you guys had a gazillion. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so we had five, and the French had eight. So we have changed history. So I think that gave you a really good idea on how the game is played or how not to play the game. <laughs> So as you saw, that outcome was not pretty. Jeff and I, or Hefe and I, got trounced pretty good. Um, so now let's get to what we think. So you can see right at the top, this is the Birth of America series. Now, uh, 1754, uh, is really the latest game that has come out in the Birth of America series. However, it is the earliest uh, because it's in chronological order. You have 1754, uh, 1775, and then 1812. So this is kind of very similar to the other ones. There's a few minor differences, and uh, we're going to cover all of those games on the channel at some point. But I do want to talk about uh, some of the things that are different. Mainly, we have the forts. Now, the neat thing about the forts is we are going to be able to roll this fort die. And as defenders, if we get this icon that comes up, we're going to be able to eliminate one of the uh, attacker's hits. If we get uh, the blank side come up, then obviously we don't. But uh, that adds a little bit more protection. The other thing is if you flee with the command decision, let's just say that the French here, they are down to their last guy and they decide to flee, what they can do is on their way out, they are going to be able to burn this fort. And that means that that fort is taken off the board and is no longer in play. So that's kind of a really cool addition that they've got on here. The gameplay between all the other ones is very similar. You've still got the dice, you've got your different factions, the map is laid out a little different, and the way you score uh, and put your victory tokens on there is a little different. Because, like I said in here, you're only placing those in either the neutral areas or the enemy-controlled areas. But growing up, I played Risk with my brothers and hated it. Uh, mainly because I was no good at strategy games and I was always the first one that would be wiped off the board. And when I first saw these games, I was kind of feeling the exact same way. Oh, this it looks very Risk-like. You've got the little wooden cubes. You're rolling dice. But one of the things that they did to basically fix that problem I had with risk is that when you do your movement, you're only moving as far as when you might have a conflict. So I can't, let's just say my army here in Fort Necessity went up here, and if we wipe these guys out in risk, I would be able to continue to go on and I could drop troops off along the way and basically mow everybody else down. Here you can't, once you have that conflict, then that is going to end the turn. So I like that aspect. I also like the, uh, the aspect of playing the cards, having basically a team, because you can play this um, either one against one, one against two, or two against two, which in my opinion is the best way to play it. But you've got somebody that's kind of helping you make decisions, you're trying to kind of plan ahead. Uh, this turn order sequence though, and having that come out random, kind of monkeys with that a little bit, but I also like that because from a standpoint of not being a very strategic player and not being good at uh, strategy games, that and the dice are kind of a, an equalizer. Now, people can get hosed on this because in, let's say in a future turn, when we were placing these, let's say, you know, the British colonials got the last turn there and let's say drawing out of the bag, then they were the first ones out and then let's say that the British regulars for the next ones out. That gives them basically momentum because they've got all these back-to-back -back turns that they can do. Um, this again kind of represents the chaos of a battle. You know, who's going to be going first? Same with rolling the dice. Um, you've just got that random element and some people won't like that because they want to have full control. They feel like, you know, like an engine building game. They built their engine. They want to be able to have that go off without a hitch exactly how they've got it planned. And here, while you can strategize, you don't know how the outcome of a battle is going to be. And, you know, that's kind of real life. And, you know, you've got that historic aspect that you're looking at. Uh, as you saw in our game, we actually rewrote history because the uh, French won. So it's an interesting concept to have in the game. I think it really adds a lot to the enjoyment. 
The other thing I like is even though you have these units that flee, you can bring those back in as reinforcements. So you've constantly bringing in a bunch of troops. Now, you know, only being able to come in at the certain muster points can be a little bit of a, an issue, but that's stuff that you have to plan for. I know there's an event card that allows you to move uh, a muster point from one area to another. And again, planning for that and using that at the right time, I think is uh, one of those winning strategies that uh, you'll come across on your own as you're playing. Knowing when to play those event cards, knowing when to move. Um, you know, do the British get up here and get established so that they can then have a muster point up there? Do the French come over here and control this port so now they, they can have their French regulars uh, come in there? So there's a lot of different uh, things that can affect how the game plays. And you've got all these different strategies that you can employ that I think really adds to the enjoyment of the game. So the components in the game are really cool. The, the dice are really nice. The cubes are nice and wooden dice. You've got your little dude for your round marker. Um, the cardboard chits are fine. The cards, uh, you know, the artwork on the cards is really good. I really enjoy that. Um, and the cards are good stock too. So uh, good components. And the artwork on the board, uh, if you just stop and look at it, uh, looks really cool too. They've got all everything pretty much labeled. Uh, you've got your Native American artwork down there or up there, uh, even down here on this side of the board. So looks really nice. Now, like I said, we are planning on bringing the other two games to the channel, 1775 and 1812. Um, really looking forward to showing you how those are going to play out a little bit different. You're going to see how the maps are different and how some of the movement and so forth is different because uh, the Native Americans here will actually join either of the sides during the battle. And in like 1812, they are all with the uh, British, I believe. So I haven't actually played 1812 yet, but I'm looking forward to it. So that is 1754 Conquest, the French and Indian War. I highly recommend this. And uh, if you like this game, I'm sure you're probably also going to like the other two, 1775 and 1812. Now, they do also have a couple of other ones. They've got uh, a Viking game that plays a little later. Uh, and you've got very similar mechanics. So you're going to want to check those out as well. So we will catch you guys next time. If you would like to support us, you can visit patreon.com slash dadvdaughter. Like and follow us on Facebook to stay current on our show schedule, sneak peeks at future shows, and to interact with us.